Sometimes we'll sit through a bad video as long as it has good audio. This time we're gonna take a look at the best ways to capture audio for video with the help of four simple steps. The first step is gonna be choosing our location and surveying the environment. The second step we're gonna talk about closing the distance. The third step we're gonna talk about choosing a microphone. And finally the last step we're gonna talk about the simple problems you'll run into and how to fix them. I'm Tom Skaronski and this is audio for video. Now the first step is very simple. You basically need to show up to your location, do a 180 degree churn, and survey it. You need to make sure you understand everything that might be a problem in that area, especially if you're outdoors. Are there wind chimes there? Are there cars there? Is the wind very, very powerful? You, these are things you need to consider when you're out in the field, and especially when you're indoors, you need to make sure that there's nothing that's gonna give off any ambient noise, and that you have surveyed your location, and you are ready to go, and everything is in your control. Now the second step you're gonna to need to pay attention to is the amount of distance between the camera and the subject or whatever the source is that you're trying to get audio from. Now, if you are four feet away, it would probably sound like this. Hi, I'm Isaac from Video Maker. Today we're gonna to talk about audio for video. If you are six feet away, it's gonna sound like this. I'm Isaac from Video Maker. Today we're gonna to talk about audio for video. And if you're 12 feet away, it's gonna sound like this. Now the simple difference is there is that probably you have noticed the closer you are to the camera, especially if it's an on-camera mic you choose, is the better audio source. That's the best way to pick up the audio. So number one that you're gonna to need to know in this scenario is get the subject as close to the camera as possible and close off that distance. Now step number three is one of the most challenging steps and involves choosing the right mic for your camera. Are you gonna use the on-camera mic? Are you gonna use a handheld mic? Or are you gonna use a lavalier mic? It all depends on what fits in your budget. Probably the best way to go is to understand the possible solutions for each one of these mics. While an on-camera mic is good quality, it tends to pick up a lot of background noise. This is why if you're going to use the on-camera mic, you need to be as close to it as possible so that the voice is the main thing that that on-camera mic is aimed at. Here's an example of what that sounds like. Hi, my name is Isaac from Video Maker. Today we're going to be talking to our special guest, Tom Skaronski. On the other hand, your standard handheld cardioid mic is going to pick up a lot of the noise that comes in front of it and nothing that comes from behind it. This is very good for picking up vocals or even miking instruments. Let's take a listen at the handheld mic. Hi, my name is Isaac from Video Maker, and today we're going to be talking to our special guest, Tom Skaronski. Now, if it fits in your budget, a lavalier mic is perfect for capturing audio. It's an omnidirectional mic, which means it's great for capturing audio that's up close, and it captures audio from the front, back, left, and right sides. It's also very small and very concealable, perfect for interviews. Here's an example of what that sounds like. Hi, my name is Isaac from Video Maker, and today we're going to be talking to our special guest, Tom Skaronski. Now you have to use what you have to use, so sometimes an on-camera mic is all you got. If you do have access to a handheld mic or a lavalier mic, these are generally a lot better because in most cases you're no longer limited to being only four to six feet away from the camera. You can go as far as that wire can take you, or if you go wireless, you could go as far as you like. The last step we're gonna look at is one you should take with you always for every video shoot you attend. You're gonna to need to understand how to recognize a lot of the problems when capturing audio, and again, understand how to fix those problems. The first thing we're gonna talk about is location. First of all, when you head into a location, if it doesn't fit and it's not right for what you wanna be doing, if there's too much noise, always try to move the subject away from that location. So let's say you're gonna interview someone about a basketball game. Is it the best idea to put them in the center of the game? Probably not. Move them into another room. Here we are at the Video Maker oh, Basketball oh, Tournament. Yeah, We're here at the finals oh, with Joshua Kidder versus Tom Skaronski. One thing that affects each and every one of us when we shoot outdoors is the wind. Take a listen to this audio clip and tell me if you could hear it. The simple solution to this problem is to block the wind somehow. Now how do we do that? I know it's not common, but you're going to want to take a big piece of poster board and hold it against the camera. This creates a block so none of that wind can hit the on-camera microphone. Now if we're using another microphone, one thing we can do is also switch our location or position so that we're behind a building instead of just out in the open so that that wind is blocked by something. You could also use a big truck, a big car, get behind something. You could also turn the cameraman's back to the wind so that again, anything you could use to muffle that audio will be there. Let's say you need to capture a voiceover. You want a very good story and you want to capture that person in their element, in their environment. Once again, just like the example with the basketball game. You're not gonna wanna film that person 
inside the actual basketball game. You're gonna to wanna to take them to an area where there's no noise. For this, we always recommend a closet. A closet is great for muffling sound. There's clothes in there, there's junk in there, there's probably a dead body in there. Great for muffling sound. Now one of the last and most important pieces of this puzzle is to make sure you have a decent pair of headphones. You need to make sure that you can isolate that audio coming into the camera and that you don't have any distractions or that you're not listening to anything that might not show up on the camera. You need to make sure that you're only listening to the exact audio, whether it be from the on-camera mic, the lavalier, or the handheld mic that's coming into the camera. Let's review our four steps again. The first thing we're gonna to need to make sure we always do is look around when we end up at a shoot. We're gonna to need to make sure we survey our location and that we're ready for the elements that are in that environment. Step number two, we're gonna to need to make sure that we close the distance, close the gap between the subject and the camera and or the microphone. Step number three, we're gonna to need to make sure that we have the best mic for our job that we need to do. We need to make sure we choose the best possible microphone. And step number four, we're gonna to need to make sure that if there's any problems in the area, we know how to fix them. Now remember, sometimes you need more than just visuals to tell a story, and this is where you need to pay attention to capturing good audio.